it is another month, which means it is time for another unboxing from Video Games Monthly. What is Video Games Monthly? Well, this is a, essentially think of it as a mail order service for retro video games. What it allows you to do for $34.99, $39.99, $44.99, or $79.99, you can get anywhere from three to 10 retro video games delivered right to your doorstep. And unlike say like a, an old Netflix style subscription-based service, you get to keep the games, which is really, really awesome. So what we subscribe to, we do the three up per month box just because, well, we've got a lot of games and there's not a whole lot that we're really looking for right now. Now, you can also change what systems you're looking to clock for from month to month to month. For example, this month I have requested, I'm hoping there are inside here, some games for the original PlayStation. I told the boys over at Video Games Monthly, man, I would love to get my hands on some of the original Spyro games. Now, I actually did get those at the Midwest Gaming Classic, so I had to go ahead, update my library, and you can track your library online. So when you do get games either from them or other places, they know what you have, so you should not, should not get any duplicates. So let's go ahead, let's open this up and see what we got. So the way that we do our video games monthly boxes, we go ahead, this is a blind draw. You probably will see what I am getting before I see it. Now pop up the values of each game on the screen. So let's take a look here at what we got in here. So we have a priority shipping envelope. Don't need that. Yeah, a couple cards here. So first, make sure that you go ahead and update your library. I need to make sure I go ahead and do so with the games that I got at the Midwest Gaming Classic. And win three games, post your box uh, to social media for a chance to win three free games in your next box. And we did get a one-up, which means that we paid for three. We should have four games. I get nervous when I see that because that means that we are probably going to have some filler. We're going to have some not-so-great games in here. Let's take a look here. Well, I've got a case. First game out. This is a very cracked case for 007 Tomorrow Never Dies for the original PlayStation. Uh, let's take a look here. So it does have, I would say that is the manual. Let's take a look at the disc. Disc is fairly clean, but I can see that they've run it through their polishing machine. It does have some little bit of residue there, so we'll clean that up with a microfiber cloth. Man, that case is destroyed, though. All right, next. Feels like another disc-based game. Driver, you are the real man. This is the greatest hits collection. I have to admit, I've never been a fan of these. Um, but then again, I didn't really care for GTA either. Uh, DB, I don't know if that shows up there or not, but DB, don't write in your manuals. That disc actually looks a lot better. All right. Let me flash the value on both of these for me not really games i want to play Let's take a look another disc based game I feel like you boys are trolling me right now 007 racing also for the original playstation i uh, got some swirl marks towards the bottom here but overall not too bad i'll say uh at least for at least what i want to play 0 for 3 right now and our last one here. Oh, wait. Feel some buttons, so let's see what we got here first. So, VGM Retro AF. Two of buttons. And this feels like either a Genesis or a Master System game in box. So, let's see what we have here. You guys are definitely trolling me because... You sent me this one recently. This is Thunderblade for the Sega Master System. Um, just the game in the case, no manual here. Uh, but we will go ahead, we'll open this up, and take a look at the condition of the pins. So one of the great things here about the Sega Master System cartridges is to get inside of it, you just need a Phillips head screwdriver, which we happen to have right here. These are actually pretty, pretty tight out of there. Now, to clean this, you don't need to take the games apart. I'm just opening this up so that you can see the condition of the pins uh, up close and personal versus like just cleaning with the one-up cleaning card, which we'll show you what those are and what I'm talking about here in just a moment. So let's take a look at the reveal. Three, two, one. Those overall aren't too bad. A little bit of excess wear and tear there on that pin, but not terrible. That side looks okay. Now I'm touching the pins because I'm going to clean them up. It's just amazing, too, to see 
how small the Master System cartridges are and the games and the ROMs versus like what the uh, NES games are. So for something like this, I don't think I'm going to have to do a super deep dive clean on them. So what I'm going to utilize is, as soon as I can get this line back in there, where you go? So I use these here. These are called one-up cleaning cards, and they are designed with a fluid and a dry side to go ahead and clean the pins on your cartridges. There's two sizes. There's the mini that I like using for like Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color games. Also works well for N64 and Master System cartridges. So I'm going to do, I'm just going to put a little bit of fluid there. All that fluid is, quite honestly, it's isopropyl alcohol. And we'll clean this side off. And all that we're doing here is we're ensuring that any gunk, any dirt, any debris that's on these pins, they basically don't wind up, that stuff doesn't wind up in our system. And then we'll take the dry side, hit that there. Still a little bit of a mark there on that one. I don't think it's going to prevent it from playing. And then what I'll do, just to hold it in place, and I don't have to put any more fluid on here. I can just rub it up, dub and buff that out. And now at this point, I'm going to make sure that I don't touch the pins now that I've cleaned them. Put them back in. Put the board back in. Slide the case back together. And then one tip, um, when you are putting screws like this back into a case, unscrew slightly. You'll feel the screw take a set in the screw there. It just did it. And then you can tighten back down. This way, it ensures that you are utilizing the existing threads and not cutting new ones. That one is clean and ready to be tested. And again, that is Thunderblade for the Sega Master System. This month's box. Oh boy, this month's box was really a dud for me. So let's take a look. We have Driver in this condition worth about $11. Now, Thunderblade is interesting because depending on condition can make a, a difference of a few dollars on this. So the hanger tab has been cut off, no manual. Uh, loose pricing on something like this, $8, CIB about $14. In this condition, I'd say this is about an $11 game. And then the two 007 games, 007 Racing is worth $9, Tomorrow Never Dies is worth about $8. So in total, we're looking at a $39 box. For what I paid, yeah, not quite the value that I was kind of hoping for. Now, granted, $34, $35.99, that is more or less than $39. What I got here is more than that value, was what I was trying to say. When you factor in shipping, though, I pay about $42, $43, so a couple bucks less. And quite honestly, the um, quality of the games, I mean, these are these are really kind of filler. You know, Driver, I think I played back in the day, but like I mentioned, I've never been a big fan of like the Grand Theft Auto style games. The Driver really is kind of what I remember it being. And I think I used to rent 007 Racing. It seems familiar for some reason. Um, Tomorrow Never Dies, not a great game. So really, the winner for me out of this month is Thunderblade. And I have played it a little bit. I love getting Master System games. Uh, those are definitely filler. But I got to double check. I could have sworn that I had this marked as something in my library. I'll have it commented right here. Am I a dummy, future Gary? Am I not a dummy? <laughs> Big dummy. Stupid! You're so stupid! Thanks for letting me know. And then all the prices, like I mentioned, these are all based off of what I saw in the game I app. Now, I'm going to take probably a couple months off of Video Games Monthly. Not because of this. I was actually going to do it going into April with conventions and whatnot, getting ready to really ramp up as spring and summer uh, come along there. Hey, conventions, you want to have me there? I'm available. Go ahead and email me, rocksolidmail at gmail.com. I want to come to your show. Um, but it's one of those things that, you know, that's kind of the, this is like the crap of a blind draw. You know, sometimes you hit the jackpot and sometimes you get crap and, well, this was kind of crap. And, you know, for some people, this would be, you know, these three PS1 games would be terrific. I am not that guy, unfortunately. So uh, these will be trade bait or uh, we will be at the uh, Illinois Game Con later on in June. These will probably be for sale. Actually, all four of these will likely be for sale at the table we will have there. We'll be there with 
Uh, Jay from Square Pegs will be there with Wes and Robert from Gaming Off the Grid and Adrian from Live Action Games will all be there at the Illinois Game Con. So let me know what you think of this box down below and check out some of our other video games monthly unboxings in the upper corner right here.